Hello, hello, what's up, my sisters? I'm Shane Fakai, and my name is Abram, and welcome to Learn Extra, your favorite learning show. It is a lovely Tuesday, and you know what that means. It means it's time for learning more and learning extra on physical sciences, and I have TK. TK, how's it? I'm good, and you, Abram? I'm Fukila Potiswan. Yes, sir, and it's on Angangai Kona, La Ida Tsungula, in Kwas, Mababzia Physical Sciences in grade 11, even grade 12, because what we're going to do, it's electric circuits, and it cuts across 11 and 12. So please sit there and uh, learn answer. with us. Ida Tsunga Swing. Ida Tsunga Swing. Yeah. Well, my sisters, <laughs> tell all your friends, whether they're doing metric or they're still uh, in the same level as you doing grade 11, to join us, tune in right now. Get your notes on facebook.com for slash learn extra i have posted the links there but otherwise you can still get all the notes on learn.mindset.co.za follow us on twitter at learn extra but now exciting news are we have a competition which is get connected with us with prizes proudly sponsored by vodacom we've got airtime vouchers uh, about 55 uh, about 60 55 friend uh, uh, airtime vouchers from Vodacom. We've already gave some airtimes yesterday, so stay tuned to find out more on how you can win those airtimes as the show goes on. But more information is on our Facebook page. Get on it right now. Good. Yes, sir. Well, now we can kickstart our lesson now. And like I said, we're talking electric circuits today. And let's quickly have a look at uh, the, the, the outline of the lesson itself. We're going to talk about how you apply Ohm's law, of course, and we're going to explain the series and parallel connection of resistors. And of course, we're going to discuss this issue around what we call internal resistance. And if you remember well, we represent that internal resistance by small letter R. OK, now quickly on your challenge question for the day, you have some good, very nice challenge question here. The diagram below shows a battery with an internal resistance R. This battery is connected to three resistors, M, N, and Y. The resistance of N is 2 ohms, and the reading on voltmeter V is actually 14 volts. OK, the reading on ammeter A1, okay, so you look at the circuit there and see the reading on ammeter A1, there is A1. The reading there is 2 amperes, and the reading on ammeter A2 is 1 ampere. The resistance of the ammeter and that of the connecting wires can be ignored, okay, so we don't see those as having some resistances. All right, and that is the electric circuit there. You are to state Ohm's law. B, how does the resistance of M, M and, I mean, compare to that of N, all right? Explain how you arrive at that answer. Whatever you're going to come up with as the answer, you have to explain. If the EMF of the battery is 17 volts, calculate the internal resistance of the battery. And when you come to number D, calculate the potential difference across resistor N. And lastly, you would need to calculate the resistance of Y. So that is your challenge question for today. Let's come to the summary notes for the lesson that we're looking at, electric circuits, right? Ohm's law states that the potential difference across the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current through it, provided the temperature remains constant. And I know that uh, for some people they will be saying, but why do you start with potential difference and not current there? That's a debate for another day. But this is the way I would like you to state this law, because that is when it is so appropriate. OK. Now. This means, according to the law, that the potential difference is equal to IR, with R being the constant in this case. The resistance doesn't change. Ohm's law is used to solve circuit problems. And I know in my absence last week, you actually have dealt with this section of work. John has made it a point that you know Ohm's law. Resistors in series as well, it is something that we're going to move quite faster on. When we're talking about resistors in series, we need to know that we will have the same amount of current passing through all of them. However, we need to understand that when we have these resistors in series, the potential difference is divided 
amongst them, okay? So potential difference across each one will not be the same because that is divided amongst them. But we can only have the potential being the same, potential difference being the same, only if the resistors are identical, same in every respect. The potential difference on the external circuit is divided amongst these resistors. For this reason, we call resistors connected in series, we call them potential difference dividers. Of course, the total resistance of these resistors can be found by adding all the resistances of all these resistors. Thus, we can use a formula that says R, which is total resistance in a series circuit, will be equal to resistor 1 plus resistor 2 plus resistor 3 plus whatever, depending on the number of resistors that you have in series. Now, if you look at the diagram that I have below here, you will see there is resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3. You've got the same amount of current passing through them, but you have different potential differences across them and then v total of course would be v total will then be given by v1 plus v2 plus v3 in this case all right nice moving on looking at resistors in parallel okay resistors in parallel will always divide the current the total current in the circuit amongst themselves and for this reason we call them current dividers Okay, the potential difference across a parallel connection of resistors is the same. So we're sharing the same potential difference. The equivalent resistance of these resistors connected in series is found by using this formula here. Okay, so if you've got a uh, uh, parallel connection of resistors, that is the formula you use to find the equivalent resistance of all those resistors. If you look at what I have here, you've got resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3 in parallel. So you would then add them, uh, I mean, use this formula to find it. If you had a fourth one, it means you would also have R for the etc., etc. So you can add on as long as you have more of them stacked together in parallel. Okay? Moving on. Resistors in parallel effectively reduce the total resistance in the circuit. So if you have got more of these resistors connected in parallel, what would happen is that the total current in the circuit is going to increase. So the more you add resistors in parallel, the more you increase the current in the circuit. That's why in most cases when you overload the circuit, because what we connect onto our mains, it's actually in parallel. When you overload that circuit, we see that we have got too much current that is to be used there, then the main switch is going to trap or it's going to uh, uh, cut the current before anything uh, bad happens. All right. So when the total current increases, the amount of total current flowing in the circuit is also going to increase. When a combination of series and parallel connection of resistors is encountered in a circuit, it will be necessary for us to find what we call the equivalent resistance on the parallel section and then add it to the series connection. In that way, we will be finding the total external resistance of that particular circuit. For example, let's have a look at what I have here. You would see that resistor 1 is connected in series with resistances R2 and R3. So R2 and R3, this one are these ones are connected in parallel. So for me to find the total uh, resistance of this circuit, it means the first thing I'll need to do, I'll have to find what is the equivalent resistance of the parallel connection, which will be given by 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. All right? In this way, I can then continue to work it out. Remember that this is not REQ. At the end, when I have worked out everything, I will then be able to say, I now have 
R E Q over one. So I invert everything. And when I get that, the total external resistance, which we usually call the total, okay, let me just call it total external resistance, will be the R parallel equivalent plus R series. And that will give me the total um, resistance in that particular circuit. And therefore, I can use it to actually find what we call the total uh, current in the circuit. Okay, so I can use that to find the total uh, current in that circuit. Now, moving on, something very important that we have to touch on today, it's called, it's something called internal resistance. What is this thing? Now, when a battery is not supplying energy to any device, the potential difference as measured across its terminals gives what we call the electromotive force, EMF of that particular cell or of that particular battery, okay? EMF stands for electromotive force. This is the maximum ability, the maximum ability of a cell or battery to supply energy to the circuit. The EMF is the, uh, is, 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 is the measured potential difference. In other words, that is the measured potential difference across the terminals of the battery or the cell. This measured potential difference of the battery will always drop immediately that cell or that battery is connected to a circuit. It's going to drop. Now, what does that mean? We started with 12, now we have got 9,7. There has been a drop in the potential difference. The EMF is no more, or the voltmeter across the battery is no more giving us that EMF. So where is that drop? We explain that drop with something called the lost volt, okay? So when that drop uh, happens immediately when that cell or battery is beginning to supply energy in that circuit, at that stage, the, some potential difference seems to have been lost and we this is where the notion of lost volts come in. So this EMF, this EMF is given by the external potential difference in that circuit plus V lost. And V lost will be given by the total current in the circuit times that small r there, which we said at the beginning, this is what we call the internal resistance. This resistance is the resistance that is inside the cell, inside the battery. In other words, the battery is itself offers resistance to the flow of charge, offers resistance to the current that is passing or moving around that particular electric circuit that we're talking about. So this issue of internal resistance is very, very important. And I want you to really take this equation very seriously because it helps us to solve so many problems in, I mean, that is or those problems that are based on circuits. And you can also realize that when you have this formula like this, mathematically, you can see that you've got a common factor there, which is your total current. Common factor I can actually be factored out, or if you can actually factorize it, take it out, and then you have your EMF given by the total current in the circuit times the total resistance externally plus the internal resistance of the circuit or the internal resistance of the battery. Why is it necessary to be for us to be able to get to this point? Because at some point you might be asked to actually tell or find out or calculate what is the internal resistance of this energy supplier, this cell, this battery. And from this 
equation here if we of course know what the EMF is and we know the total current in the circuit and of course perhaps we may have been able to calculate for the external resistance in that particular circuit we can then be able to use this formula to look for the internal resistance of the energy supplier at this point let me hand it back to Abram Thank you so much, sir. Well, guys, keep your questions coming on Facebook and also your comments and your shout outs to your friends. But we'd love you guys, we'd like you guys to help one another on the page because it is all about us getting connected to one another, getting connected to Learn Extra, and getting connected to the prizes proudly sponsored by Vodacom. For more information about the competition, go to our Facebook page. We'll see you after the, this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. If you just joined us now, you're a bit late, but I'm sure you can still catch up. Um, I've got some tweets and some comments from Facebook that I'd like to go over before we, get, um, we carry on with our lesson. There's a tweet from uh, Mukoliti saying, good luck to all the grade 11s. Um, it's science time, and it is my favorite subject. I hope it's your favorite subject, too. Uh, but thanks, uh, Mukoliti, for that. And then on Facebook, there's just like quick shout-outs, uh, like this one from Njabulo Brian saying, I'd like to send a shout-out to... Jabulo Tabete from Unopala High School, grade 11. And two last uh, shout outs uh, from Sizwe Polani saying, Hi Abram, I just want to say a hello to my schoolmates at Masibonisane High School. Last one, it's Sergeant Serge Gladi. Hi guys, I'd like to send a shout out to friends, Potejo and Given Lapo. I love you guys. Guys, let's carry on with the lesson. But remember, if you're stuck anywhere, let's help one another. As much as we'd like to send shout outs to everybody, but let's help one another. That's the only way to get a shout out. It's yeah. on set. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Abram. So we're carrying on now. We're yep. coming into this section where we actually try to work on improving our skills to deal with problems, to work out solutions to questions based on electric circuits. Let's just have a look at the first question here. Question number one. In the circuit uh, represented below, a battery of EMF 30 volts and an unknown internal uh, resistance R, these are connected to resistors as shown. Okay, so we'll have a look at this uh, uh, circuit here, as shown on the circuit. So what we have been told, this is 30V, that is the EMF. Okay, EMF equals that. Ignore the resistance of the ammeter and the connecting wires. And then we come to the questions down here. The current passing the through the 10 ohm resistor, which is this one, is 0 0.6 amperes. Okay? Calculate the equi equivalent resistance of the two resistors in parallel. Now, the two resistors in parallel are these ones here. I am to calculate the equivalent resistance of those. Okay, how do you do that? Remember what we did earlier on what we showed 1 over REQ will be equal to 1 over resistor 1 plus 1 over resistor 2. I only have two of this. Therefore what I have is 1 over REQ equals 1 over 6 plus 1 over 10. Now finding the lowest common multiple here 1 over REQ then equals 30, because that is where those two will, will come together. 6 into 30, 5 times. 5 times 1, it's 5. Plus 10 into 30 is 3 times. 3 times 1 is 3. This means, so I'm going to use the space up here. This means that 1 over R E Q equals 8 over 30. Therefore, I'm not looking for 1 over R E Q. I'm looking for R E Q. So R E Q would then be equal to 30 over 8. And that is, you can then use your calculator. All right. So that will be 30 divided by 8. 
And what do we got? What do we get here? 375. 375. All right? So 375 ohms. This equals 3,75 ohms. All right? So that is the total or equivalent resistance of the parallel connection there. So I've answered 1.1. 1.2, find the current through the 8 ohm resistor. Now, if you look at where the 8 ohm resistor is, there is the 8 ohm resistor. For me to get that, what I can do, my reasoning here is that if I know, because I've been told that passing through the 10 ohm resistor, it's 0 0.6 amperes. If I know the current passing through the 6 ohm resistor, if I know the I there, I know that that I, when this I, the 0 0.6 passes there, and whatever it is, the I passing th through the 6 ohm resistor, when they get there, they come together and they give me the total I. And that will be the total I that is passing through the 8 ohm resistor. So what do I do to solve that problem? If therefore I find what V is across there, I will know what current is passing through the 6 ohm resistor. And how do I do that? All right. The potential difference across parallel connection is the same. So it will be the same for 10, it will be the same for 6. Then if I find the potential difference pass, I mean, across uh, the 10 ohm resistor, it will be the V parallel. So it will be I passing through uh, the 10 ohm resistor. I'll put it like that. So if I do that, it will be 0 0.6 times 10, and that is 6 volts. If I've got 6 volts there, then I can find the current passing through the 6 ohm resistor. The current passing through the 6 ohm resistor will be equal to V across the parallel divided by the 6 ohm resistor. Okay? And therefore that will be 6 divided by 6. Okay? Uh, v is 6, we have just calculated for it, we found it there, and then Vp uh, is 6, we, we calculated for it, and the R, or the resistance of the 6 ohm resistor is 6 ohm, then that gives you 1 ampere. Now, if I've got 1 ampere here, if I've got 1 ampere passing through uh, the 6 ohm resistor, and I've got 0.6 amperes passing through the 10 ohm resistor, the total current... IT would be equal to the sum of the two. So 1 ampere plus 0.6 ampere will be 1.6 amperes. Now this 1.6 amperes is the current that will be passing through that 8 ohm resistor there. Okay, good. So here I would have answered that question here. As we have calculated, you will see it will be the 1 point six uh, amperes for that question there. Right, moving on. We have to come to this one here that says find the internal resistance of the battery. Okay, internal resistance of the battery. Remember what I said earlier on? EMF would be equal to I into R plus R. So we need that formula to solve this problem. Now, what is the EMF here? We are given it as 30, okay? And what is the total current here? We have calculated for it. We found it to be 1.6 amperes. And what is the total resistance? You would see with the total resistance, let me use this different color. This resistor, which is 5 ohm resistor and the 8 ohm resistors are connected in series. Then we have found the equivalent here on the parallel connection is 3.75. So the total resistance of the circuit, let me just, the total resistance, let me call it the effective resistance because that includes the internal resistance there, uh, will be uh, 8 
plus 5 plus 3.75 plus internal. That will be the total. But if I just want to find the external, total external resistance, it will be 8 plus 5 plus 3.75. And what do we get there? This is 13, uh, 8 plus 5 is 13 plus 3.75. That will should be uh, 16.75 ohms. That is the total external resistance. Okay, so I'm going to use this one because I want to substitute it to that value there. EMF is 30. Total current is 1,6. Total external resistance, 16,75 plus internal resistance R. Okay? You can work this out. Uh, let's now bring in our calculator. Okay? Now I'm going to work it out in this way. Right? So we can actually do this. We can divide both sides by 1.6. So 30 divided by 1.6. Right, 1.6. What do we get? Uh, that's not 1.6. That's let's go back to 30. 30 divided by 1.6. All right, you need to be careful about what comes out on a calculator, check all the time. So that gives you 18,75. So this is 18,75 equals. All right. Uh, 16,75 plus R. Okay, then we bring it back because our R here will be 18,75 minus, okay, it will be 18,75 minus that one there. So what are we going to do? I still have 18,75 there. I'll just say minus 16,75, okay, so minus 16. 0.75. What do I have? I've got two. So my small r is two ohms. Okay? So that is one way of solving that problem there. So we have dealt with the whole problem down to the last one where we had to find the internal resistance of the, of the battery. Okay? okay. Moving on. Before you move yes. on, there's a yeah. question um, on that question All right. from uh, John. Yes. John says, why did we change 8 over 30 to 30 over 8? Oh, okay. L remember, uh, uh, John, that here what you are doing, you are finding 1 over REQ. But we don't want 1 over R REQ. We want REQ. So from here, you, in, you are actually inverting that formula or that uh, 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 fraction there. So it, will it is now REQ over 1. Then you also have to invert what is on your right there, 30 over 8. The reason is we want this REQ. We don't want 1 over REQ. Very important question. You always have to keep your 1 over REQ as you do your calculation so that you don't forget at the end to invert everything and get the right answer to that. Okay, now moving on, let's move on to the next question, question number two. It says here in the circuit represented below, 260 ohm resistors connected in parallel are connected in series with a 25 ohm resistor. The battery has an EMF of 12 volts and an internal resistance of 1,5 ohms. So we are given the internal resistance this time. We don't have to calculate for it. Now let's see what they are saying here. Again, they say calculate the equivalent resistance of the parallel combination. And John is going to get another chance to get this very clearly about how to find the equivalent resistance of the parallel section of a circuit. So quickly, uh, John, we're looking at this. We're saying 1 over REQ because we're finding the parallel connection now, the equivalent resistance. That will be equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. We only have two of this. Therefore, this means we've got 1 over REQ equals 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60. And then this is going to give us 1 over, this is going to give us, um, 
1 over REQ equaling 2 over 60. So John, from here, remember your question is, why do we make uh, uh, 60 over 2 and, and not leave it like that? The issue is here. We want REQ. So REQ over 1 will be equal to 60 over 2, and that would mean that REQ is equal to 30 ohms. I hope John and everybody else that had that problem would have uh, uh, found the assistance in this question here. Now the next question says total current in the circuit. Now if I have to find the total current in the circuit, I need to take into consideration that, that, and that. And because I'm given the EMF here, I have to take into consideration my internal resistance there. So. First of all, I need to find R effective. That will be equal to R parallel plus R series plus R internal. That will be equal to R parallel, it's 30. R series, it's 25. And the internal is 1,5. So plus 25 plus 1,5. Uh, plus 1,5. Okay, 1,5. And what does this give us? This is 55, 56, comma. Okay, if you're not so sure, you take your calculator quickly. 30 plus 25 plus 1,5. And what do you get? 56,5. So that is 56,5 ohms. Okay, when I have the total resistance here, then I will be able to find the total current in the circuit. And how am I going to do that? I total will be equal to V over R, okay? And that will be equal to what is V? And in fact here, I wouldn't want to put it that way because conceptually, conceptually I, am, I would be making an error there. The total current there will be given this time because we are including the internal resistance. It will be EMF divided by this R effective here. So R effective. Okay, that will be equal to what is our EMF? EMF is 12. So this will be 12 divided by what is our total, the effective resistance, 56 comma 5 and then we go back to the calculator and quickly say this is what this is uh, EMF which is 12 divided by 56 comma 5 right and we get our current there to be 0 comma 21 amps 0 comma 21 amperes right so that is how you could have uh, dealt with that question there. And let's just quickly see, uh, we had to find, I think, before we deal with the challenge question, we'd have to come back to this one here, where we are to find the potential difference across the parallel section. But quickly, we know that potential difference across that parallel connection it would be total uh, current to multiply by RP, and quickly we will be able to sort that out. Let me hand back to Abram for now. Thank you, sir. You know what Elena say? Hey? Yes. They say these questions are so difficult. They are really difficult. Yes. And, and <laughs> once they get it, it's very easy to work with. You just have to follow the logic. It, it involves a lot of logical thinking. Mm. Just understand how a circuit works and the logic behind it. You get it. So true. Yeah. And if you don't understand, we're still here to help you guys. But yes. there's another challenge, the challenge question, which you need to do uh, during this break. After the break, we'll be answering it for you guys. So see you after this break. Welcome back, my sisters. Now, awesome news. Uh, you know about the Casio calculator uh, giveaway. We're always giving away this every day. So we've got another winner from last week's show, and you could be like that winner. All you need to do is to jump on our Facebook page, check the, um, the link that will take you to Curie and its code, answer the test yourself questions. Voila, you could stand a chance of winning this awesome Casio calculator. But without any waste of time, our last week's winner is... 
Masombe? Masombe Bongane. Yeah, hey. Awesome. Congratulations right. to you, Masombe Bongane. This case your calculator is coming your way and we'll be in touch with you. Okay, yeah. good. Now let's proceed and let's finish off that question there and then we move on to our challenge question, the challenge question for the day. Remember, we were here now. We have calculated for, we found the current in the circuit and therefore that is the current that passes or that is shared between the two resistors in parallel here, here. So that is the current that is shared there. So we can find what V is across the, the VP because it's going to be the same for both of them. So we can then say here that this is going to be uh, 0 0,21 times. What is the REQ, all right? We found it to be 60 divided by 2, which is what? 30 ohms. So that will be multiplied by 30. And what do we get? Uh, again, don't waste your time. You go to the machine, 0 0.21 times 30. Okay, that's the equivalent. That is 6.3 volts. So it will be 6.3. It's volts because we're calculating for the potential difference there. The unit of measurement is the volt. Okay, good. Moving on now, looking at the challenge question, the question for the day. The diagram below shows a battery with an, with, uh, uh, with an internal resistance R, so we don't know what it is, connected to three resistors M, N, and Y. The resistance of N is 2 ohms. Now, this is key to the question. And the reading on the voltmeter V, it's 14 volts. Now, where is the voltmeter V? You can see the voltmeter V, it's across the source, it's across the battery. And everything is connected now, this cell or this uh, circuit is in operation. So, if we have the uh, the, p the, the, the voltmeter connected across the ends of a battery in a cell that is working and we are told that reading is 14. That tells you this is not the EMF. This is the potential difference across the circuit. Okay, so it, is, it talks to what is the external uh, potential difference now. All right, moving on. The reading on ammeter A1, now where is A1? A1 is there, it is showing us total current. It's total current in the circuit, okay? The reading on A1, on, on A1 is two amperes. And the reading on ammeter A2, look at where A2 is. A2 gives us the current. Now, if let's look at how the, this current is moving here. Current, we're talking about conventional current, it's from positive to negative, conventional current. So that means that this current is from, because this is, this is my negative end and that is my positive end. You can see that because of the arms here. Yeah. Okay, so the current is moving like that. It passes through there, it gets in here, then it gets divided there. Part of it goes through resistor N, and part of it goes through resistor M. Now, if A2, which is this one here, reads one ampere, all right? It means that the current passing through M is one ampere, all right? So if the current passing through one M is one ampere, and yet the total current is two amperes, that must be saying something to you already. But let's move on. All right, the resistance of ammeter in the connecting wires can be ignored. Okay, so that resistance is not, is negligible. State Ohm's law, I mean, we should be knowing this one. And we're not going to waste time on this one because we know how to state it. We stated it in the notes, you must know how to state it. Okay, potential difference across the ends of a conductor is directly proportional to the current provided the temperature remains constant. How much or how does the resistance of M compare to that of N? Explain your answer. Now, the key is here. It's on the current. The current passing 
the total current is two amperes. The total, the current passing through M from the information given to us is one ampere. Now one ampere is a half two amperes. That would mean the resistance of M, resistance of M equals to the resistance of N. Why? Equal currents are passing through equal amount of current passing through each resistor. Okay? So one, one resistor. That will be the explanation there. All right? So resistor M equals resistor N. Okay, when you compare them. Of course, equal current are passing through them. Okay. C, if the EMF of the battery is 17 volts. Wow, key information here. Calculate the internal resistance of the battery. People, if you go back here, this is 14 volts. That is the potential difference across the circuit. So if they tell you that the EMF of the battery is 17 volts, and yet when the circuit is in operation, what we find is that the potential difference across the terminals of the battery, which is the potential difference across the circuit, the whole circuit, it's 14. How much lost volts are you having there? Because that is the key. So for you to find the, the internal resistance, we can use this formula here, that V lost is equal to total current in the circuit times the internal resistance, okay? Then the question is, how do you find V lost? V lost will be equal to what? The EMF minus V external, which is what has been given to you on that circuit. The 14 volts is your V external. So they are telling us that EMF is 17 volts minus 14 volts. This should give us what? 3 volts. Okay? So V lost will be what? 3 volts will then be equal to total current. It's 2 from the what? As given from the uh, circuit diagram times internal resistance R. Therefore, the internal resistance R, small letter R, will be 3 over 2. And what is that? 1,5 ohms. OK? So we can actually get it in that way. Simple, straightforward. Like I said, some it demands some logical thinking. But at the end of the day, once you get the hang of it, it is so simple and easy to do. This is one section where you can score a lot of marks, but you need to practice more often, do more calculations based on this, so that you can get the hang of the logic that is needed for you to follow it through and be able to answer all these questions. Okay, and of course, you must know how to use all these formulas and know exactly where to use them. Okay, now the next one want us to find the potential difference across resistor N, all right? Now, where is resistor N, all right? If you look at resistor N, there is resistor N. The potential difference across both the two should be the what? Should be the same because they are connected in parallel to each other. Now, how do we get the potential difference across there? We know the total current there is 2 amperes, okay? And then we know the resistances here because, look, we are told that the resistance of N is 2 ohms, okay? So if the resistance of N is 2 ohms and we know that through A1, through M, the current is 1 amp, ampere, it means through N, the current is also one ampere, all right? So we can actually find the V there. V, which will be the same for the parallel connection, will be equal to IR. And because I'm using N, 
and I have every information around N, I can actually use that. The current through N times the, the resistance N. But if I didn't, I didn't want to use this one here, I would use the total resistance of the parallel connection. And that's another way of doing it, which you can, because the information is there for you to use. So I would use this one, where the current through N is 1 ampere, I know, times the resistance N is 2, then that is 2 volts. Okay, but that 2 volts is for both, because they are in parallel. Then the last one says, calculate the resistance of Y. Now, when you look at where Y is, that is the series connection. Now, if we know this is two, let me use a different color here so that we can all see what I'm talking about here. If this is two, um, two ohms, because we have established that the resistances are equal, I can find the resistance of the uh, parallel connection, then add it to my series connection to find the total uh, external resistance there. How do I do that? Okay, for the parallel connection, the equivalence of that will be found in this way. 1 over Rn plus 1 over Rm. Okay, and this would be equal to, so 1 over Req equals 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. All right, this is 2 there, so this is still 1 over Req equals 2 to 2, 1, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 to 2, 1, 1 times 1 is 1. Therefore, Req, and then I hope uh, John is watching, hasn't stopped watching. <laughs> eh? This is John's question. So <laughs> now we, we, we're coming to that. We don't want 1 over Req, John. We're looking for Req. So that will be 2 over 2, and that will be 1 ohm. All right. Okay. So 1 ohm. This 1 ohm here, this 1 ohm, which is the equivalent of all those, plus this will give us the total uh, resistance in the circuit, okay? And then we now know, we also know the total current in the circuit. So we would say that V external will be equal to total current I times total resistance there, which will be given by what? Rp plus R series, and the R series actually, it will be your what? Your Ry, it will be that one there. So we can say Ry here, okay? So I'm just uh, using some logic as well to get to that. V external is 14 equals I is two times. Rp, we have just calculated for it, it's one plus Ry, we can do that. Okay, here you can divide both sides by 2. If you do that, you're going to have 7 equals 1 plus resistor Y. Okay, therefore, resistor Y, the magnitude of resistor Y will be 7 minus 1, and that will be 6 ohms. Okay, so in that way, you would have solved that problem there, your challenge question. That's what it was all about. The main thing, it's about the logical thinking. You follow it up and you get used to it through practice. You can actually ace those problems here uh, based on circuits. Well, from me, that is the end. Let's see but if we've got some questions to answer. Yeah. Uh, yes, to there's just this one common question that the masters are asking. What effects does the internal okay. resistance R have on circuit? What does? What does the internal resistance? Yeah. Ef what effect does the internal resistance okay. have on a circuit? The internal resistance is part of the circuit, so you need to add it to the, your total or what we call the effective resistance of your circuit there for you to be able to solve your problems correctly, especially when you are just given your EMF. Awesome. Well, because right. of time, we have to end it well, there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Akenza. Akenza Sunene. Mitipina, Mitirakate, Kasai, Siamwina, wishing you so well. Thank you so much, my sisters. That's it from me and Tinyiko. We're leaving you in peace.